Onk Live Insights is a video editorial program produced by Onk Live. So if we determine um, on the optimal treatment, we would um, put in the beginning the question, can that particular patient tolerate intensive therapy or not? Now, if that patient can tolerate intensive um, chemotherapy, then we would most likely also apply it. The next question would then be, which is the molecular pathology um, of that tumor? And we would routinely, at least in my country, determine the RAS mutation status. And in some patients, we would also add the BRAF mutation status. So if you have a RAS wild type in your tumor, um, we would probably go for an anti-EGFR-based chemotherapy. So we would add either cetuximab or panitumumab to a chemotherapy regimen, which is mostly a combination chemotherapy, Folfox or Folfiri. If that patient would have a RAS mutation, we would normally go for um, um, bevacizumab plus combination chemotherapy. And in some cases where we have BRAF mutations, uh, we would go for the most intensive chemotherapy that is available, and that would um, consist of fox eerie So all the chemotherapy um, that is um, available, we would give that um, um, in um, uh, one um, um, application to the patient, and we would add to it bevacizumab. We have a much better understanding now as to how to proceed with systemic chemotherapy for patients with metastatic colorectal cancer. It is very important to realize that we have multiple options, and there is really no clear superiority of one option versus another. For patients with RAS wild-type tumors and BRAF wild-type tumors, it is very clear that the addition of anti-EGFR therapy will prolong the overall survival of patients significantly. Specifically, in the first-line setting, a clinical trial of Fulfox plus penitumumab has shown that if you select patients out who have RAS wild-type tumor and BRAF wild-type tumor and treat them with Fulfox penitumumab versus Fulfox, you get an improvement in overall survival of approximately seven months. The CRYSTAL trial looked at Fulfiri versus Fulfiri cetuximab, and when you select the patients with RAS wild-type tumor, BRAF wild-type tumor, you have an improvement in overall survival of about eight months. These are very clinically significant improvements in the outcome of metastatic disease. So we know for this patient population, anti-EGFR therapy is very important and will result in a significant improvement in the first-line setting. It is not very clear, however, if you will not derive a benefit from this specific strategy as well in second-line and third-line versus first-line. In other words, there's no clear evidence that you have to sequence the anti-EGFR therapy in the first line versus second line versus third line. In the same patient population that we just discussed, RAS wild type, BRAF wild type patients, we know based on the 80405 clinical trial, which has randomized patients to chemotherapy versus chemotherapy, chemotherapy with bevacizumab versus chemotherapy plus cetuximab, that there was no difference in overall survival. So you can also make an argument that the same patient population, RAS wild type, BRAF wild type, will also benefit from bevacizumab-based first-line chemotherapy. So we really have a choice here for patients and for physicians to choose between anti-EGFR therapy or bevacizumab in the first-line setting for patients with RAS wild type, BRAF wild type tumor. What is clear, however, across three clinical trials now, whether it's the FIRE 3 clinical trial the PEAK clinical trial, and CLGB80405, is that in patients with RAS wild type, BRAF wild type tumor, when you combine chemotherapy with anti-EGFR therapy versus chemotherapy plus bevacizumab, you result in a deeper response, and you result in a better clinical response. Now, this may have an impact on the potential of resectability of disease. Indeed, on 80405, we see that there is a larger proportion of patients who got treated with chemotherapy plus cetuximab who underwent curative intense surgery compared to patients who underwent treatment with chemotherapy plus bevacizumab. So that covers the RAS wild type, BRAF wild type population. 
I think for the RAS mutant population, it's clear there is no benefit from anti-HFR therapy, and those patients will receive chemotherapy plus anti-angiogenic agents in the first line and second line treatment. The BRAF population is small and is more refractory, and in that setting, there is really no clinical or clear clinical advantage to anti-HFR therapy. Those patients require aggressive chemotherapy and would benefit from clinical trials. In general, in patients who have resectable disease in the liver, will either undergo resection up front or receive three months of chemotherapy, typically with full pox, and then undergo resection. The difficulties become in a setting where the disease is not resectable. If the disease is not resectable, then I want to use the chemotherapy that has the highest response rate ever. At this point, I think the highest response possible is either with a triplet chemotherapy, with or without bevacizumab, or with anti-HFR-based therapy, either fulfiri cetuximab or fulfiri penetumumab or fulfox cetuximab slash penetumumab. Those would only apply, however, for about 40% of patients with RAS wild type BRF wild type tumors.